Hello everyone, so in this video we will be learning how to compute the prediction accuracy of various models. So now we have seen that um, we have, what are the stages of machine learning and uh, first we have the training phase wherein we fit a model, then we have the validation or the test phase where we test the model that we have created on a new data or basically out of sample data and then we predict or forecast the values or the outcomes using this particular model on the new data which we get in right so when we say that we test our different models to compare that which model is better here we will learn different uh, measures as to how you can compare different models together so before moving ahead uh, let me tell you all that how we divide the entire machine learning model into two main categories the first category is the regression models so your uh, you can actually divide your you can actually divide the entire machine learning models into two groups the first group is the regression models regression models are basically the models wherein the response or the the output variable or the y variable is a quantitative variable meaning the uh, for example if i say what is the sale figures right if you are predicting the sales figures if you are if you are if your uh, y variable or the output variable is uh, the uh, maybe number of claims coming in or the claim amount you have to calculate on for a particular insurance company or maybe the share price so all these which are quantitative in nature are actually classified as your are actually uh, you know considered as your regression models over here for example number of uh, crimes happening so these are all considered to be the regression models the second group is the classification models classification model as model wherein your response variable are categorical or qualitative whereas here we have quantitative in case of classification models these are qualitative data qualitative data can be whether you have covid or you don't have covid whether you should buy a particular product or the customer will not buy a particular product whether whether the person will get a heart attack or will not get a heart attack or these are the different or maybe you have more than one categories for example whether this particular person will fall into to, uh, you know categories of default non-default or cannot be determined so these are the different categories wherein you have different uh, category categories uh, in consideration you call it as a classification model right so these are the two major models that all our machine learning models can be put under so now we'll start first with the regression models and how we'll see that these regression models can actually be uh, you know uh, what are the different measures in order to understand the prediction accuracy or the accuracy of these models because at the end of the day all we want is the higher accuracy of our models so that whenever we predict a new data set the prediction is as accurate as the actual outcome right so these are the different regression models uh, we have OLS regression penalized regression and regression trees that as we move ahead we'll be doing these so the first uh, thing over here is to estimate the error now when we are saying we are talking about the regression model in case of a regression model uh, as we have mentioned these are quantitative data sets quantitative meaning you can actually get a number right for that maybe it is in continuous form or maybe in it's it is in its discrete form what do you mean by continuous and discrete? Continuous is meaning it can take any value. For example, if I tell you how, what is the uh, sales figure, the sales figure can take any value. Where exa for example, if I tell you how many customers will come into your store, so how many customers cannot take any value. It can just take integer values, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, so on. It cannot take the value of 4.5, right? So these are the different uh, quantitative data which are classified as your regression uh, models so over here we need to estimate the error of the individual case now before moving ahead let me just uh, take an example over here so that it becomes easier for us to understand for example we have a few values given to us let me say you the location of the store that we have the products that we sell uh, the income of the people in the country all of these will affect my sales figure and this is my buy value 
right this is my y value now i have been given with a few data sets over here right i have been given with a few data sets what i will have to do is i will have to use income location and products that are being sold in order to predict what will be my sales amount now the model which i have created is known as a regression model over here because we are trying to predict a quantitative variable now the model the prediction of the model is denoted by the whatever the uh, model has predicted whatever the model has predicted this is denoted as y hat we call this as y hat so this is basically your predicted value and this is your actual value which is given to us so now we can compare the estimate the error of we can now compare the error basically how can you compare the error or check the error what is the error actually your error over here is the actual value of y minus the predicted value of y which is your y hat this is known as your estimated error this is known as your estimated error value of a particular of a particular observation of a particular observation now this thing will be done this error will be found out individually for all the observations for example i have observations of 10 uh, stores right maybe 10 locations 10 income 10 product categories now i want to just check the sales figure i already have the outcome with me which is y actual y and i use my model to predict the new y which is there or the y hat and the difference between the two and always we take the actual value minus the predicted value as the error term right so this is the error now what we want to do is we have to minimize this error the less the error you are getting the less the difference between your actual value and your predicted value you can say your model accuracy is much much better right so that is how we compare different models now for that the very first thing the very first thing over here that we can actually take out is the mean squared error what is mean squared error your error is y minus y hat right what is squared squared is basically taking a square of your error and then take a mean of in this entire uh, thing by dividing it by the number total number of observations that we have over here so this gives us mean squared error and we are individually taking out the error term for individually all the observations squaring the error terms dividing it by n this gives us the mean squared error the less the mean squared error of a particular model the better the model is because why firstly why are we taking a square over here we are taking a square because we are not bothered about the positive or the negative error for example when your y minus y hat is a positive figure this means that your actual value of y is higher than the prediction that you have made maybe the actual sales were 40000 but you predicted the sales to be 35000 in this case you will have a positive error for example if this value is negative meaning the actual sale was 40000 but you predicted it to be 43000 in that case 40000 minus 43000 gives you the error of minus 3000 so we are not bothered about whether it's positive or negative we are just bothered that the actual amount of the error should be very very less that is why we take out mean square error now in r programming we can directly take out these values we just by passing a few commands so we actually don't have to remember these formulas by heart right moving on to the next uh, measurement over here which is known as r squared so what is r squared let us understand the meaning of r squared over here r squared is basically an indicator suggesting that how your y variable is explained using the x variable so how what is the variability what is the variability in y that is being explained that is being explained by your explanatory or x variables over here right so the more the variability of y is being explained the higher the value of r squared will be basically i have created a model that is able to explain let me tell you 90% of the variability or changes in y variable and you have created a model which can actually explain 95% of the variability of the y variable then we'll say that your model is a better model than my 
model that I have created, right? So over here, this is the entire formula. Not going into the details of the formula because, as I mentioned, that we can directly calculate the R square value in in our R. Uh, uh, studio. So over here, the R square value will always be between zero and one, or it can be between zero percent to hundred percent, or between zero to one if you are calculating in decimal terms. So if I say my R squared value is zero point nine or zero point nine five, then this is a better model in case of when you are comparing the R squared, right? So this is how we actually uh, eighty percent of the variation of the response variable is determined by the predictors or the x values or the x variables. So this is your second measurement R squared. But there is a disadvantage of using this particular measurement, and generally we don't use this particular measure. Why? I'll tell you. Because the more you increase your x variables, for example, here in my example, I took income, location, and product in order to predict or in order to calculate the sales figure. For example, this is a model which I have created, and this is giving me an R square value of 90%. Now, what you have done is that you have taken income, location. Products and along with this, you have taken the number of employees and you have taken the uh, size of the store. So you have taken two additional predictors over here in order to predict or estimate the sales value. And your R squared value is coming to as ninety five percent. So anyone who is just comparing the R squared value will say that your prediction is much much better. Your model is much much better than mine. But actually, you have to collect more information. You will have to collect more data on the number of employees and the size of the store in order to predict the sales value. So. What do we understand by this entire example is that higher the number of predictors, higher will be your P, uh, R squared value. So basically, higher the number of your predictors, higher the number of your predictors, higher will be your R squared value. And this is true in all the models. This is always true in all the models. So this. Particular measure is not very very good or effective when we compare different models with different number of predictors or explanatory variables because the model with the higher explanatory variable will always give you a better R square. That does not mean that that model is good because there is a trade off that we have to maintain with within the prediction or the uh, prediction accuracy of the model and with the number of parameters that we are using. For example, if we are using a high Number of parameters or high number of uh, predictors actually, then it means that you will have to collect more information. It is time consuming. Uh, it is uh, very costly as compared to the models with lower number of predictors. So you have to make a trade off between the number of predictors and the accuracy that you desire. So for that, in you know, uh, in order to overcome this particular challenge, we calculate the adjusted R square, which is generally the widely used measure in machine learning. So adjusted R square again is using is is actually uh, related to R square value that we have calculated above. Just that the difference over here is that the original R square value is adjusted for the number of parameters or the number of predictors that we have in our model. So what this will do is that for higher number of uh, predictors or for the lower number of predictors, when I have suppose three predictors and for example if I have just five predictors, then in that case what it will do adjusted R square it will adjust this particular figure in such a way that you can. Easily compare this model with a model of three predictors only. So you can see the formula. The formula is one minus one minus R square. So it actually uses the original R square. This n over here is the sample size. That is the size of your observations. For example. I have taken a data of hundred values or hundred rows, right? And then this p is the number of predictors. For example, this will be three in model one, and it will be five in model two. So this is how it will actually adjust for the number of predictors that we have. So what this actually measure tells you, just listen to this carefully, that uh, it adjusts for the higher number of predictors. And we say that if you are increasing. 
if you are increasing your predictors from 3 to 5 then the increase in r square should be sufficient enough to afford this additional cost and additional time taken again i will repeat if you are going from three predictors to five predictors then the additional increase in the time and the cost should actually be less than the increase in your variability explanation or increase in your r square so increase in your r square should be more than the increase in the time taken efforts taken uh, in order to increase from three to five predictors so that is why we use adjusted r square instead of using r square value so the two most important uh, measurements that we use in regression models first is your MSE mean squared error and then we have the adjusted R square right now we'll move to the classification models now classification models are very interesting and very widely uh, used models these are more common in practice as compared to your regression models here the output is generally uh, a decision to make whether you will buy the product or you will not buy the product whether the particular person will continue with the netflix subscription or whether they will not continue with the sub uh, netflix subscription and there is a possibility of maybe getting bankrupt or maybe getting an illness so there are different categories there are different outcomes uh, these are qualitative outcomes and not quantitative outcomes in case of classification problems these are the different classification problems which exists in machine learning uh, now let's move to how we can actually check the accuracy of a uh, classification problem so over here we to the we, to ascertain the prediction accuracy of a classification model is given by the percentage of class of correctly classified cases so for example I I'll take an example over here where I will say that uh, you, uh, the model which I am creating is trying to predict whether the person has a covid or whether the person does not have a covid so that is what what my model is trying to that is what my model is trying to predict whether the person has a covid or whether the person does not have a covid right now actually it might so happen that in actual the person will have covid or the person will not have covid which is a particular disease right so actually the person has a particular disease but my model has predicted that the person has the disease meaning the real value is the person having the disease and the predicted value of my model is also the person having the disease so these are known as true positives these are known as true positives then you are saying that the real value the actual the real meaning the actual value is the person having the disease and the predicted value having the disease so we call it as true positive and shortly we write this as tp then again we say that the actual value is no meaning the person does not have the disease in reality but your model has actually predicted the person to be having the disease this is known as your false positive this is known as your false positive why because the person your model your model is predicting the person to be positive but this positive is false why because in reality the person does not have the disease but your model has predicted the person to be having that particular disease right now again actually i am saying that the person have the disease but your model is saying that the person does not have a disease so your model is saying that the person is negative but this negative is a false negative but actually the person has the disease again the person actually does not have the disease but your model is predicting and again your model is predicting that the person does not have a disease so it's a negative your model is saying that it's negative but you are but in reality also the person does not have a disease so your model is saying the person is negative and in reality also the person does not have a disease so it's a true negative it's a true negative right so we say positive we say positive or we say negative 
in case of the prediction in case of a prediction we call it as positive or negative and when this positive is true in reality you call it as true positive when this positive is not true or meaning the person in reality is not positive then it is taken as false positive and so on so this is known as this entire thing is actually known as a confusion matrix because sometimes it gets a little confusing over here and it was it is also known as a classification table but but generally we call it as a confusion matrix right so we have true positive we have uh, false positive we have false negative and we have true negative right so it's a very uh, good table that we can now again in our programming we can easily get this table uh, just by from passing one single uh, command now we will check the accuracy of our model so my accuracy of the model over here will be my accuracy of the model will be when the person is when my model is giving me true positives and true negatives these are the two correct outcomes in reality the person is positive so true positive your model is predicting that the person is negative and in reality also the person is negative so this gives me true negative true positive plus true negative divided by the entire number of observation gives you the accuracy rate this is one of the most important measures in classification models to compare the different machine learning models that we have right so true positive again th these are the correct values and these are the wrong predictions meaning you have predicted a false positive or a false negative so this is your accuracy rate now using this confusion matrix we don't only calculate the accuracy rate we also calculate some other measures these measures are known as first one is your precision so what is precision precision means that out of out of your total predictions out of your total predictions of positives out of your total predictions of positives how many are truly positive how many are truly positive so basically this is truly positive by truly positive plus false positive multiplied by 100 this gives you the precision meaning how many positives you have classified in reality how many out of these are actually true so for example let me tell you take take a disease which is contagious which is spreading like um anything if you if the diseased person is going outside right so now here what happens that in this case having false positives is not a very bad idea why why i'll tell you because the person who is classified as a false positive meaning the person is predicted to be a positive but in reality the person is not positive so person it has to just isolate themselves at homes they have to follow some rules and they have to stay at home which is much 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 better than having false negative why what is false negative false negative is that you are actually a covid patient you are actually a person with the disease but you have been classified as negative meaning you have the disease but you do not know that and you are roaming on the streets and you are spreading your disease to someone else so this is the most dangerous part now it depends on situation to situation this was one of the situation wherein having false positive is fine but having false negative is very bad idea so we so we should actually try to reduce our false negative so now you all get it what precision is all about Preci precision is out of how how many positives that you have classified how many are truly positive right similar to precision we have something called as recall or sensitivity it's different measure what is recall or sensitivity so it says that how out of actually your uh, true values out of actual true values how many are predicted to be true so out of the entire true values or out of all the actual positive value how many you or your model have predicted to be true so here we basically mean that true positive 
divided by true positive plus false negative in 200. So what does this mean over here that out of actually how many has out of actually the uh, correct or the true values your model has predicted those values to be true. In this case now in this case the example which I was taking of this particular disease for example here we want to reduce the false negative values meaning the person actually has the disease but your model has predicted that the person does not have the disease. So in that case what will happen in that case the person is roaming on the streets and spreading the disease to someone else. So having false negative can be very very dangerous. So here what do we do we have to minimize this false negative meaning we have to maximize this particular equation we have to increase this particular equation. Now there is generally a trade off there is generally a trade off between the false negatives and the false positives. So if you want to diminish this, you will somewhat have to increase this meaning you might classify people who does not have the disease, but your model is classifying them to be having positive disease, right? So this is much better than false negative. In that case, the person is roaming and spreading the disease. This is your this uh, one example. Let me give you one another example over here. So one another example over here can be, uh, for example, we have um, an advertising company and the company is targeting to particular group of consumers. Now these particular group of consumers are the people, let me take through this particular example over here, which I have. So my uh, the study which the advertising company is conducting they are classifying the con consumers the prospective consumers into people who will actually buy your product or people who will actually not buy your product so you are actually predicting you are actually predicting the people who will buy your product or people who will not buy your product so if your prediction is that people will buy the product, so you will target that particular consumers and you will go for a targeted advertising for these people who will buy the product. Now, in reality, there might be people buying. In reality, there might be people not buying. So this is known as that your real value is that person is buying the product and you have predicted that the person will buy the product. This value says that the person will not buy the product in reality, but your model is predicting that they will buy the product. So you are wasting your resources on these 14 people. You are actually targeting these people for advertising. You are wasting your resources on these 14 people unnecessarily because you are doing targeted advertising to these 14 people but they do not end up buying the product, right? So your model went wrong over here. Now another thing we have over here is the people will actually buy the product. The people will actually buy the product but you classify them as not buying the product. So here you are not advertising. You are not advertising to these people because you have classified them earlier to be not buying the product. So you are not advertising but still they are going and buying your products. You are not advertising directly to these people but these people are actually going up and purchasing your product. So you are not wasting your resources over here. So even if this value is high even if this value is high, it will not affect your cost. Why? Because you are not advertising to them, but they are actually going and still buying your product. So even if this value is high, it will not be a very big deal. But if this value is high, meaning the people who does not buy the product actually, but you are going and advertising to these people. So it is a, it is a complete loss of your resources. So what we have to do in this case is that we have to minimize our, these are known as, again, if you all remember, I'll quickly make the table for you all. These are true positives. These are positives, but false positives. These are negatives, but these are false negatives. These are true negatives. So in this case, I want to reduce my false positives, meaning they do not 
buy the product but you classified them to be buying the product and you unnecessarily advertised to these people and at the end they did not purchase your product so it's a waste of resource so now here i've taken an example where i've calculated accuracy accuracy rate is your accuracy rate your two positives plus two negatives divided by complete n which is 100 right then we have then we have precision precision was if you all remember precision was true positive divided by true positive plus false negative giving you 74% Meaning the person who actually bought the product out of them, how much did you classify as positive? 74% is a good value because here we want to maximize this. We actually don't bother about this being less or low. We actually don't bother because they actually end up buying your product. So it's a good thing actually. Then we have recall. Recall is your, recall is your true positive divided by true positive plus false positive what we want over here is that to minimize our false positive in order to save our resources and so getting a less ratio is a better getting 80 percent is very high meaning you are actually wasting a lot of resources so you should minimize work on minimizing your false positives and work on minimizing your recall so these are your different measurements that we use in different types of classification models Right? Thank you so much. In my next class, we'll be studying a very, very important concept.